All right, welcome back to another video. So we're going to go ahead and talk about data fetching in Next.js. So before we get into that, I'm going to go into my project and I'm going to install Axios real quick. You can install any HTTP client library, but I personally enjoy using Axios. So I'm just going to go ahead and install that. So I'll also install the types as well. So we are installing Axios as well as the types package. And then let's go ahead and run our app again. Okay, so when it comes to data fetching, this is a very important concept to understand in Next.js, okay? So when you build regular React apps, so just out of the box with create React app, you're used to using your own HTTP library, either using fetch or Axios. And then what you would typically do is inside, for example, let me open up uh, one of my components. Let's go inside the blocks page, for example, right? You're used to doing something like use effect and then performing a side effect inside here, such as um, making an API call. Okay. Now you could do this, or you could do this inside the use effect hook. In fact, let me actually just show you. So let me import Axios real quick. And what I'll do is I'll fetch some data from uh, this fake JSON web server. Okay. Good way to kind of like just get some fake data. So let me just do axios.get, paste that URL in. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll just uh, go ahead and just, I'm not gonna like use any state variables. I'm just gonna, I just wanna console log the data just to show you how this works. Well, we can assume that this data is being populated. It is gonna be populated inside a state variable. And then we can render it. So let me go into my uh, my blogs page right now. So let's go over to right here. Let's go to slash blogs. Now, if we look at the console, so let me refresh this page. You're going to see that the data is fetched properly. There's no errors. Okay, and that's good. But here's the problem, though. When we actually use the use effect hook, right? this callback function is going to perform the side effect after the component mounts. So in our case, we're actually not even taking advantage of the pre-rendering uh, mechanism that Next.js provides underneath the hood. So you're going to notice that if we actually try to render this data, so let me actually just do const, uh, let's just call this a uh, posts, uh, posts state. And uh, I'll just go ahead and set the state real quick just to show you what it would look like. But you'll notice that this actually happens in React apps when you're fetching data asynchronously. So let me just pull map. E, e dot, uh, I'm not sure what the data looks like. It's ID and title. Let's just do P dot title. Uh, and I'll just type out take this as any for now. And let me also add a an empty dependency array. Okay, so I'm going to refresh and let's see uh, why is this not? Oh, whoops! This should be. I messed this up. Hold on. There we go. Uh oh, let's add the key as well. All right. So you're going to see right now we have our posts being rendered, but you'll notice that the data appears after the component mounts. That's why there's like this little delay over there, right? Well, in Next.js, we want to we want to understand when we want to uh, take advantage of static site generation, surf side rendering, as well as client side rendering, because you can actually do all three um, in a Next.js app, right? And it's important to determine like, you know, which part of your app needs static site generation, which part of your app needs server-side rendering, and which part of your apps might need client-side rendering, right? In our case, uh, when the document gets sent to the actual uh, to the actual browser and it gets loaded up, right, the component's going to get mounted and it's going to call this JavaScript on the client side, okay? So I want to mention that because you might not necessarily want that to happen because you might want to actually load data on the server side, have all of the HTML become generated, and then you know have that data loaded in HTML, and then sent to the actual, sent to the actual browser, and have the browser loaded up. Okay, 
again if you didn't if you haven't seen my videos where i talk about these concepts definitely go check it out because it's really important to understand this okay but i thought i'd mention that so that you all you all are aware of what's going on so instead of actually fetching the data inside use effect hook what we want to do instead is we actually want to uh kind of like preload data right so what we can do and there's three different functions but we're going to go ahead and talk about one of them and it's called get static props okay so get static props uh we can export a function that's called get static props so let's do that real quick okay and this function literally just returns props okay so let me show you what i mean by that so for example if i wanted to return well, i'll just hard code some props so let's just say posts id1 title hello world okay and what i can do is inside the next page i can destructure uh posts well let's see hold on i can actually uh destructure posts but for some reason typescript is going to complain so i gotta actually uh do this let me do logs page props and i'll just do this as uh as an array for now I'll just do array of any okay and then what i'll do is i'll pass in blog pay, blogs page props okay so now we have uh, an array of posts and what i'll do is i can then uh reference this posts prop and i can uh, dynamically render out this array of posts so posts dot map e and then we'll go ahead and return a div and we'll do title and then key will be p.id and let's save and let's refresh and you're going to see that when i refresh notice how now the data just literally appears like there's no like there's no like split second where the data is not there and the data just magically appears right because when we used the use effect hook we had the page render and then we had client side javascript fetch data and then we had client side javascript generate all of the uh, the html for us in this case all the data is already pre-rendered on the server side and it's just sent to it's literally just sent to the browser to load so you'll see that it just doesn't like you know like it just appears instantly right because everything's already pre-rendered okay so inside this get static props um you can literally use this function to return props to this component this blogs page component okay so uh yeah that, that's pretty much it with this function okay now there's a couple things that we should obviously talk about with get static props so get static props is typically used to fetch static data so you typically want to use this well you could you could actually fetch anything you want but this data is going to be fetched once and during build time so a couple things that I want to mention with get static props is with get static props, this function is called only during build time. Okay, now because we're in development mode, uh, it's going to be called all the time because, you know, we're, it's going to rebuild the app and we're in development mode, of course. So that's why it's always going to call every single time. Okay, but if you're deploying your application, if you're building the app, get static props will only call one time only. Okay, and it calls it during the build phase. So when you run, uh, so for example, when you're ready to deploy your app, when you call next build, okay, it's gonna go ahead and call get static props uh, for every single one of the page, for every single one of your page files that has this function exported, okay? And it's so if, for example, if get static props fetches data from an API, it's gonna go ahead and fetch that data and then it's gonna go ahead and load it up uh, and generate the HTML with all the data um you know parsed into the html file or parsed into the html document and then it's going to go ahead and send it to the browser okay so that is the main important thing to understand with get static props okay all it does is it just returns an object that has the props property and you can literally return props okay and when you want to reference those props you can just destructure it inside the uh the page component right over here so what I'll do, uh, finally, is in, so we'll we'll go back to the example where we use the use effect hook to fetch data from the fake JSON server, 
instead what we'll do is we'll just uh we'll do that inside get static props and i'll end the video after we do that so let's go ahead and do const uh data equals await axios dot get and i'm going to go ahead and pass uh pass in the url okay so this is going to return an array of posts and i'm going to go ahead and just uh type annotate this as posts and i'll just quickly create a custom type up here for now i'll call this uh i'll call this blog post and it's just going to have an ID of type number and then title string. Okay. And I'm going to use this type to type annotate Axios, the get request. So that way this data uh, will be an array of blog posts. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just instead of returning this hard coded array, I'll return posts just like this. Okay. And what I'll also do is I'm going to take this blog post type and reuse that down here. So instead of having it as an ar array of any, it'll be an array of blog post. So we have type annotate everything. Let's go ahead and go back to our app. And you're going to see that if I refresh, I get post one, post two, post three. And these are all fetched from the uh, the fake JSON server or the uh, the default JSON server that we're using. Okay, but this could obviously be any API that gives us back, uh, you know, data. Okay, this is just a simple example. But you'll, you'll notice if I refresh the page, the data literally instantly appears. If we were to use the use effect hook, you'll, you'll, you'll recall that the data appears after like half a second. Okay, and that's pretty much the main difference between using, you know, use effect hook to fetch data and using uh, get static props. Okay. So that's pretty much it for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to talk about a function called get static paths, and I'll explain what that is and how we can use that with uh, dynamic routes. Okay. And after we talk about that in that episode, we're going to go ahead and talk about get server side props. Okay. I don't want to talk too much. I'll let the other episodes talk about those specific topics. Okay. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next episode. Peace out.